Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. This is your girl, Abigail Mensabunsu, CEO and founder of the Moon Goddess Publishing, Moon Goddess Academy, and the Moon Goddess Circle. And here to give you this week's goddess energy forecast. Shall we begin? So just taking a deep breath in with me. This week feels heavy. The energy feels heavy as what is coming through is that we're working with our shadow selves. We are working, we're doing some shadow work this week. And I am glad that the dragons have stepped up to continue to work with us because they're perfect for that, that type of work. So don't fret. <laughs> But let's talk about shadow work. You know, I'm sure you've heard about it, especially if you're in the spiritual community, you've heard about shadow work. You've heard about how it is important for, you know, for us to do shadow work. But what is it and why? You know, do we all have shadows? Yes, we all have shadows. Shadows are created from our past experiences, right? Shadows are created from, you know, what happened in our childhood when someone said no to us, when someone, you know, caused a trauma. Um, you know, they are created from past experience. But the, what makes it a shadow is that you haven't faced it yet. Now, what, for example, if we're dealing with like shadows that have been around since you were a child, you know, when you were younger, you could not have dealt with it, right? Unless you had an amazing parents or support system who were able to help you work through it. But most likely, if you still have that shadow, you did not. And so they become shadows because they are missing the light. What is the light in this case is our awareness, our consciousness of what that trauma was, what that pain was, what that, um, that heartbreak was, what that experience was, right? Because those experiences, those past experiences become shadows when we shove them deep, 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 deep inside our psyche and we close that lid and we lock it, right? And mainly because most people don't know how to deal with it. You know, society doesn't give us the tools to work with our trauma, with our pain, with those past experiences that literally breaks us into pieces. It's totally understandable. So it makes sense that now, you know, on a collective basis, this is coming up so that all of us, even if you've been doing shadow work, you're gonna be working on the next level or the next layer, right? And I'll give you an example with what is coming up with mine. I absolutely love shadow work. A lot of people are so afraid of shadow work, but let me tell you, this is where growth really happens. This is where the magic really happens. Because when you're working with your shadow self, when you're doing shadow work, what you're doing is saying that I am no longer closing my eyes to what I need to see. I am choosing to open my eyes to see what I need to see, to feel what I need to feel, to heal what I need to heal. You're bringing the awareness and the consciousness deep inside your psyche. You're going there and you're opening that box and you're letting all of that experiences out. The other thing I want to talk about with shadow is this. Shadows look scary, right? It's kind of like, um, just imagine we're in a house. And this one room that you've kind of locked up is dark in there. There's no light in there. You haven't been in there for God knows how long. You don't even know what you put in there, right? And so your mind begins to create all these monsters that could live in that dark room. This is because you have no idea. You've forgotten what is in there. You cannot even see in there to, you know, to see what exactly is in that room. This is, this is kind of like the shadow work here, right? But the moment you have the courage to break through the fears that your mind has created, right? The moment you step into courage and you put the key in the door and you unlock it and you open the door and you turn on the switch, you realize that that monster that you thought was in that dark room was a teddy bear sitting in the corner. Or, you know, in this case, it might be your inner child sitting in the corner or an aspect of your psyche that needs to be seen. Shadows just wants to be seen. Your shadows want to be seen. We bring light to our shadows 
by truly acknowledging the existence. This is sh shadow work. And this is why we all do it. There's no such thing as, okay, I'm starting shadow work now and I'm going to end shadow work at this time. Because again, we're humans. We're constantly having experiences and not all experiences are supportive. Then not all experiences are loving. And so we always experience something that, you know, that creates a shadow. And the shadow is that maybe at that moment you could not handle it. You could not heal it. You could not forgive that person. Whatever that reason is, it doesn't matter because we all do it. It's part of the human experiences. What I'm trying to do here is demystify the fear around shadow work, the fears around your shadows, their experiences, their memories, the parts of your psyches that have been through painful experiences that have not been acknowledged. And so this week, pay attention to what is coming up. What is coming up for you to, he, this is what, what is coming in. Just acknowledge it. No more closing your eyes and pretending it, it, it's, you know, maybe if you close your eyes, it'll just disappear because it won't. It is time for you to simply acknowledge what needs to be acknowledged within you. What shadow is coming up so that you can bring light to it? And you bring light to the shadow by simply acknowledging it. I see you. I see you. I see you. So one of my shadows, you know, in the mystery school, um, as I was doing my ritual master, ritual mastery initiation, you know, one of the things that ritual mastery path is all about facing your shadows and doing that shadow work, right? They're, they're about, there's like five main paths that we walked and each path is probably like a year, a year and a half that you, you walk this path and really integrate the teachings, the deeper, um, higher teachings. And so ritual mastery, that, that's the path that a lot of people dreaded because it challenges you to face your shadow. So, you know, here I am in class with my teacher and we're going through stuff and we're trying to figure out, you know, the shadow. And I remember, you know, it, we were talking about my shadows and, you know, she was doing like a reading to kind of get clarity, help me gain clarity on it. And what came up was that for me, I had physically embodied my shadow through my weight. So my weight is a physical sign, like a physical manifestation of my shadow. And what is my shadow? My shadow is like past life experiences, you know, the even this life experiences, the pain, the abandonment. Mine was like um, really is based on abandonment because my shadow in a child is the abandoned child. Right. And that abandoned child manifested by creating a layer of protection around her. Which, because it was never acknowledged, it manifested physically as layer on my physical layers on my physical body. And so I remember her looking at me, she's like, you have physically, physically manifested your shadows, you, your physical body is your shadow. And I was like, what the, <laughs> what the, right? And so this week, it was no, you know, I've been doing this work for a long time. I, mean, I was initiated probably like eight, nine years ago, right? And I've been doing this work for a long time. And so this week, it was no surprise that that aspect came back again, you know, where is different now because I'm not, you know, I'm not like trying to ignore it. It's more like, okay, I see you. I see you body. I see where I feel uncomfortable. I see where I would like to hide, but I choose not to. I choose to hear you out. What do you need? What can I do to help you shift? What can I do to help you release that which needs to be released? So pay attention to what, how your shadow shows up. You know, for me, 
you know, because of the work that I've done, I know it very clearly. I can see it, right? I can see it if I haven't, if I ignore it, it definitely will show up on, in, on my body. So for yours, what is it? What is your ugly? What is your shadow? Is it addiction? Is it infatuation? <laughs> Is it your um, attachment to, to sorrow and pain? What is your shadow? If you're like, I have no, I have no idea how to even start. What I would, what would, I would invite you to do is to check out my, or send me a message and let me know that you're interested in finding out your shadow, your shadow archetypes. And then we can kind of do, um, we can do your chart and see what your shadows are and how you can bring light to the shadows. This is a very, very powerful work. So this is like the energy that we're working with this week. It is deep, right? It, it feels kind of, now that I'm, maybe after I've talked about it, it doesn't feel as heavy because the, it doesn't feel as heavy because the solution comes with it. You know, like we have the amazing dragons here to help us with that. You know, when you're feeling heavy, who better to work with with the dragons? Because they have access to our dimension. They're able to really come in. And if you listen to last week's um, Goddess Energy Forecast, I hope that you were able to experience them. And you're going to continue to experience them because I'm really getting like with this eclipse, we're going to be doing a lot more shadow work. That's the next thing I wanted to talk about. Eclipse, this is why the shadow work is coming, being highlighted at this time. Eclipse really bring in big transformation. But what really happens is that that inner, the stuff that have been hidden for a long time, come to the light so that you can finally face it. This is how transformation happens. So the things that you've been shoving down finally gets forced out so you can face it. So we're in eclipse season, right? We're in retrograde season. All of that is helping us to deal with the things that we didn't deal with, with before. So that we, when it's time for us to move forward, we can move forward feeling lighter, feeling free, free feeling connected, right? So powerful. I feel like this week is initiating some, something um, really powerful in terms of the work that we are, um, we are to do. So I want you to be gentle with yourself this week. Honor. I want you to honor the emotions that come up. Honor the emotions that come up. Like really see it. Whether you feel like crying, whether you feel that anger. You know, when you're feeling those, those fiery emotions, make sure you have a healthy outlet to really help disperse, disperse that energy. But honor what is coming up. Simply witness what is coming up. That alone can be transformative in itself. This is not a time for you to pretend it doesn't exist. Because it does. Whatever is coming up, it does. And it will not let go until you have witnessed its existence within you. So taking a deep breath in here. And out. And close your eyes, place your hand on your heart, and anywhere on your body that you need to place your other hand. Go ahead and do that. You can put it on your stomach, your womb. If you want to place both hands on your heart, go ahead and just breathe in as I call in your higher self into your heart, as I call in your own divine team of support to come in and surround you, create this beautiful circle of empowerment and protection and love around you. I'm going to call in the beautiful dragons who continue to guide us through this time to be with us. I'm going to call in the angels, archangels, the beloved goddesses, the masters of light to just come in and be with us this week. So imagine from the top of your head, you have this channel extending up and it goes all the way up and you see this big ball of light that represents source light, the heart of the Divine Father. Go ahead and just plug into that light. And then open up your channel so the light begins to 
pour down through that channel into you, into every part of your being. And let that light anchor within your heart. And now bring your awareness to the base of your spine and the bottoms of your feet. And imagine, see, sense, or feel this root, these three roots coming out of these um, three spots into the earth that it could go through the different layers of the earth all the way down, down, down until it reaches the center of the earth where you see the mother heart's matrix there. However that represents to you is how it wants to be shown to you. But go ahead and plug into the, the, this heart of the Divine Mother. And again, open up your channel, begin to drink up this nectar of love from the Divine Mother. Bring it up through your roots, up, 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 up. Let it flow through every part of your being, bring it into your heart and anchor it in within your heart. And so within your heart now, see, sense, or feel threefold flame. So you see the, this flame from you, your own light, the flame from the Divine Father that you just brought down and rooted, anchored within your heart, and the flame from the Divine Mother that is also anchored within your heart. And when they all come together, they kind of like explode or expand and create this beautiful golden bubble of light all around you. I'm getting fiery bubble of light because we are transmuting. We are transmuting a lot of things this week. It's a lot of fire, of course, dragon energy, right? We're burning away. We're burning away anything that needs to be released. And we're also using the fire to bring in light to the dark. Breathe in and out. Feel safe, feel secure as you're surrounded by the love of the Divine Mother, the Divine Father, your own higher self, Holy Spirit self. It is safe for you to do this. It is safe for you to see yourself. It is safe for you to face your shadows. It is safe for you to bring light to the places within you that crave the light the most. And from this place, go ahead and ask which of these dragons are working with me this week. One, two, or three. And once you have received the number or numbers, go ahead and open your eyes, still being centered within your heart, open and ready to receive your message. All right, let me take in a drink here. I feel like a lot just poured out. Make sure you drink a lot of water this week, okay? To really help you um, let go, release, transform, detox, right? Because that's where releasing on the, in, on the spiritual level, the physical body will also be doing the same thing. So really eat foods that nourish the body, take plenty of naps if you're feeling called to drink water, hydrate your body, okay? So if you received, oh, this dragon is beautiful, delicious. So if you received um, dragon one, you are working with beloved ascended master Kuan Yin's dragon, Kuan Yin's pink dragon. Let's see, there we go, you can see it. Ah, that's beautiful. Look at how beautiful this dragon is. Okay, let me find it real quick. I should have like found it first. Let's see here. Where did you go? There we go. All right, so Kuan Yin's pink dragon card number one you are walking with Kuan Yin's pink dragon and this dragon brings firm love that resets your karmic balance how powerful is that this dragon brings firm love that resets karmic balance and this dragon is saying, see all your cords dissolved by transcendent, transcendent love. Enjoy your freedom. Look for the divine around you. So Kuan Yin, this is a little bit about Kuan Yin and the dragon. Kuan Yin was a great and revered dragon master who lived for 2000 years in China. Her, her fifth dimensional pick 
pink dragons created special portals for her so that she could go through them and rest in higher planes. This is how she was able to maintain a physical body for as long, for a long period, right? So Kuan Yin's dragons have the most beautiful pale pink color. I'm gonna show it again because this is delicious. The luminous pink of the sacral chakra. They will pour their transcendent love into any cords that tie us to others, whether from this life or any other. In any dimension or plane of existence, dissolving all karma under the law of grace. So this card, choosing this card, choosing this dragon, offers you an opportunity to heal all your relationships, including those from past lives that you may be unaware of. Ask Kuan Yin's beautiful pale pink dragons to dissolve the cords that still tie you to others and sit quietly while they do so. I love that last part. Sit quietly while they do so, which means that you don't need to do anything. Let them do it. You may sense or feel them releasing you completely. Take a moment to feel the freedom that this offers you. These great hearted dragons will then help you to see with eyes of love. Look for the divine in everyone and be aware of all situations from a higher understanding, knowing that Kuan Yin's gentle pink dragons are by your side. These gracious dragons will enable you to enrich your relationships and transform your friendships. They will help you to treat all people with great respect, care, and love than ever before. Remember to thank them for enhancing your life. So again, just like I taught you last week, the way I want you to work with this dragon, so call them in, you know, whichever you choose, you know, whichever dragons you, you're working with this week. So, for example, if you're drawn to card number one, you would say you can use this invocation. I now call to me Kuan Yin's pink dragon. And you can I want you to sense, see or feel this pink dragon emerge around you. So literally it's like standing. You're like underneath it. Right. It's like protecting you. So you're underneath it. And it's like huge. Right. And you, you, everywhere you go, it's like walking with you. Right. Like that's how I want you to really bring in that connection very strongly. So if you receive card number one, you are walking with Kuan Yin's pink dragon and you are working on healing your relationships this week. Let's see what card number two brings. Oh, I'm loving these cards. We have uh, we I think we have some violet flame action also coming. Let's see here. There we go. Huh. Of course. So card number two, if you received card number two, you are walking with the lilac fire dragon. This dragon transmutes through the power of divine love. So again, we're continuing, you know, that energy of divine love with Kuan Yin's dragon, right? So this dragon opens you up to transcendent love and enlightenment. Purity of heart brings peace, hope, and joy. About these dragons. So these dragons are also fifth dimensional dragons, just like Kuan Yin's dragons. And however, they can reach, reach up into the ninth dimension to access the awesome lilac fire of source, which is a new energy recently graced to earth. I love this. This carries transcendent love as well as enlightenment. This is the second time transcendent love has come in, right? First one was with Kuan Yin's dragon. When these dragons pours, when, when these dragons pours the lilac fire over and through you, you are bathed in divine feminine light which has the power to dissolve all lower energies in pure love and bring us peace, hope, and joy. This is my card. <laughs> this is totally my card. 
It also bathes you in the higher divine feminine qualities of wisdom, agape, and oneness. Having this energy in your aura may even allow you to experience bliss and ecstasy. Oh, I am feeling this card. Who else has this beautiful dragon? I am walking with a lilac dragon this week. Let's do it. Let's do it. So here's the message from this fifth dimensional dragon. When this dragon comes to you, a lilac fire dragon will touch you with incredible ninth dimensional light. So call it in and ask it to touch you. Let's do it right now. Let's call in the ninth dimensional lilac fire dragon to touch you, to flow around you and through you. Do you feel it? <sighs> yeah. Mm -mm -mm. As it approaches you, breathe in divine love and sense the lilac fire enveloping you. And lilac, I don't know if you can see it through the camera, it's exactly the color on this card. So if you want to envision that. Lilac is like a, a lighter um, purple. Notice particularly how you feel when this dragon touches you and sense the purity of the love that it radiates. Ask this dragon to remain with you to anchor the glorious light of the lilac fire and take you into a new and illumined way of being. When you do this, the love radiating from your heart will become purer and more beautiful. People will sense this and respond with trust, respect, and gratitude. Like everything about this card is is totally for me. Consciously work with this beautiful dragon and notice the difference it makes to your life and the quality of love around you. I now ask the lilac fire dragon to remain with me to anchor the glorious light of the lilac fire and take me into a new and illumined way of being. I ask the lilac fire to come in, touch me, and flow through me. <sighs> mm. You feel it, as I do. Beautiful. So that is the lilac fire. The, li the lilac fire dragon, oh my gosh, I feel... Mm. Is, is definitely burning off some stuff right now. Like I feel it, beautiful. If you are walking with this dragon, let me know how you're feeling, all right? Oh man, okay, another powerful dragon, my loves. Another powerful dragon, whoo. So, so far we've had the fifth dimensional dragon with Kuan Yin, right? Kuan Yin's um, pink dragon. And then we jumped into the lilac, um, fire dragon who's ninth dimension so let's see what this last card where are you there we go there we go so if you received card number three this week you are walking with the alpha dragon this is also my second card. So I have two cards. It was like, whew, <laughs> it was like immediate. I feel it. So it's very interesting. The colors of those two cards are very similar, right? So this dragon harnesses the divine masculine power of creation. Breathe this in with me if you were drawn to this card. Hmm. So this dragon will help you destroy the old, visualize your dream, and help you to manifest a new world. Yes, please, right? So about this dragon, these incredible galactic dragons carry Archangel Metatron's highest light. So one of my core archangels is actually Archangel Metatron. No wonder it was like, yep <laughs> i'm totally here with you and i feel it i feel it like next to me they help 
they help to create the universe that we live in and continue to breathe the young energy of manifestation into our world. Because they have the power of physical manifestation, they work with our thoughts when we or the collective mind of humanity are ready to bring something into creation. These are enormous and powerful dragons, they feel like it. They only work for the highest good. As they can build, they can also destroy. They are entering our world now at the end of the old era and start of the new to facilitate the distraction of that which no longer serves our planet and the construction of a new world at a much higher frequency. How perfect is that, right? So here's the message from the alpha dragon mm -hmm, who's stepping into the alpha, alpha um, power with me, alpha energy this week. Alpha dragons are bringing you a very special message. You are being called to demonstrate creative forces in your current project or experience. So ask these magnificent dragons, these magnificent beings to assist you and know that their masculine energy will empower and strengthen you as you visualize what you want to build. You can also ask these dragons to support you in constructing our new fifth dimensional world. As you hold the vision of the new golden age, they can take your pictures and breathe life into them. This is a new card. This is a card of raw power and creation. So ensure your intentions are pure. Mm. Hmm. Just breathe. I love the connection. I love the flow of the divine feminine energy coming from the previous dragons. And then now, you know, with the this powerful, you know, masculine energy, divine masculine energy to anchor all of that in. If you were drawn to all, all three cards, there's a beautiful flow with these cards. So um, pay attention to that. You know, like for me, working with the lilac fire dragons, which is also the divine feminine and having the divine masculine, there's definitely going to be a beautiful balancing going on this week for me as I release these shadows once and for all, right? asking the dragons to come in and but this is what i wanted to talk about with the alpha dragons it, it goes really beautifully with the new moon energy that just passed I and mean, we're still experiencing that energy right you can ask these you know if you set an intention you can ask these dragons to blow life into your intentions especially the ones that are aligned with you to bring it to life like that's powerful right there you know i already did it <laughs> so place your hand on your heart i want you to bring your your dragons in feel them around you <sighs> mm, beautiful breathe 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 thank the dragons for coming to walk with you to come into work with you this week we're so grateful dragons thank you for being here with us mm. just breathe in the energy i'm seeing like a merging of the energy with your energy field you know whichever dragon stepped forward to work with you i'm seeing that like your colors being infused in your energy field and for me, it's like I have the bubble of light and now I have this layer of fire, like a, a, a cyclone of fire around me. But there's also like this, this cyclone of, this like an internal cyclone of fire, like clearing my internal channel. And then there's the bigger one outside that is clearing my outer channel. We just breathe as they do this. Be open, be open, be open. Uh, 
Use your breath, be here now, really feel them. Uh, as they bless you with their fire, as they bless you with their light. Mm, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your fires. Thank you for your transformative power. Thank you for being with us this week. And thank you, higher self, divine father, divine mother, angels, archangels. Thank you, Metatron, for showing up. Archangel Mikael Saint Germain, they're all here. Beloved Kuan Yin is also here. Mm, beloved Sophia is also here. The divine Sophia is also here. Makes a lot of sense. Just breathe, breathe, breathe as you show up. Oh, my dragon is sexy. Like I'm seeing it, like all oh, the scale, like just, oh, I love my dragons. I've been walking with my dragon for a long time. Like I have a core golden dragon that I walk with. Um, so dragons are not, they're not strangers to me at all. I love them and they've been with me for a long time. I understand like they're powerful. They're so powerful. And there's such powerful allies to have with us on this journey that we are experiencing here on this planet. So don't be shy with them. You know, one of my favorite things to do is to teach um, children about their own dragon, their own dragon um, spirit animals, because what happens is that it gives them, it gives them this boost of courage and power, right? As they are roaming around in the world and, you know, this, learning about themselves they get to know that they are protected they're safe and secure you know especially when you can sense and envision this huge dragon walking with you like what is there to be afraid of right so i love i love teaching kids about this um they just you can tell the difference like the moment they can see the dragons it's like oh they're fearless <laughs> they, they are fearless right they can truly feel safe to be all that they are and knowing that they're protected. I, I usually do the animal guys so that I introduce them to the dragons. I also introduce them to the angels too, so that they have the team, like the core part of the team really, you know, there. And then it, it kicks out a lot of the fear that comes in. I love, I love teaching kids um, this magic here. Mm, it's starting to rain here. How beautiful. <laughs> All right, my loves. Mm, thank you so much for receiving this week's Goddess Energy Forecast. Remember, remember, remember. Take it easy. Honor, honor yourself. Take care of yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Nourish your body. Your physicality means the world. Okay, don't ignore it. And know that, yes, this... This week might be just a little bit heavy, but we have allies that are here to free us from that heaviness. But the only way they can do that is if you, if you choose to really go there to see it, to, to be aware of what shadows want to be illuminated at this time. That's the way to go. And of course, as always, if you know anyone who would benefit from these weekly goddess energy forecasts make sure you send it to them share it with them and if you haven't already yet make sure you click on the subscribe button subscribe to my channel and also the bell so that every time i post something you get notification um and the last thing is that I'm, I'm still looking for contributors for my book, Miraculous, which is weaving together stories of transformation and miraculous experiences so that we can activate, inspire, and instill hope into humanity through these stories, to, through these experiences. So if you or anyone um, that you know are interested or you have a story that you want to share, and through that process, become a number one best-selling author. Go ahead and click the, um, I have the link at the bottom there. So find it, click on it, and go ahead and fill out the form. And let's get you going. I'm so excited to, to bring this to the world, to birth this magic into the world. And, you know, this, this magic that will help so many people. So I'm really excited. All right, my dears, from my heart to yours, until next time. Have a fabulous week. Mwah. Bye, everyone.